Hey everyone, it is Brad, physical therapist here at Align. Uh, last time we talked about measuring the Cobb angle of using an x-ray. This time uh, we want to take a look at the sagittal profile. So in the sagittal profile we can look at the kyphosis and, and the lordosis angle uh, along with a few other things that, that we'll take a look at today. Um, so if you want to come over here, we have an x-ray. First thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the kyphosis. So our kyphosis angle that we wanna look at is we wanna locate first and foremost, T1. T1 is gonna be where the first ribs come off of. The next location you wanna look at and find is T12. Once we find these two, we can take our ruler just like last time and we're gonna follow along the upper end vertebrae of T1 so I've kind of cheated and already started that here. We wanna take that line out as far as needed. Once we have that, we're gonna go down to the lower end plate of T12. And these x-rays, as you can see, are not always easy to tell. But once we find, find that angle, Now, last time we talked about sometimes we don't have enough room, right, where we, where we can get a nice and easy angle to measure. So again, we're gonna take these lines and we're just gonna go perpendicular to the line up, perpendicular to the line going down so that these cross right here and then we can measure this angle. So, as you can see, this is a pretty small thoracic kyphosis. This one I've got measured at eight degrees. Now for our lordosis, excuse me, we wanna go down and we wanna find L1 is our first location and L5 is gonna be the bottom of the lumbar spine. So once we find L1, we can take the upper end vertebrae or the upper end plate of this vertebrae. We're gonna come back this way. We're gonna go and find L5. We're gonna line up at the lower end vertebrae. And this one's nice because we have a nice angle that we can measure. So we line up our point, and that's measured at about 40 degrees. So we have a 40 degree curve, or a 40 degree lower dosis, and an eight degree kyphosis. Now, one other thing that I do wanna go over and mention is something called the pelvic incidence. Now, the pelvic incidence is going to be uh, our sacral slope and our pelvic tilt together. Um, in another video, we're gonna go over what these parameters mean uh, in relation to lordosis and how that can affect treatment. Um, for now, we're just gonna go over the measurements. So to measure this, the pelvic incidence, we're gonna find the base of the sacrum. So on this picture, I'm gonna draw kind of the, the front and the back. We wanna go in the center of that. Once we find the center, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here, look at the femoral heads, and we're gonna draw circles around the femoral head. The other one is not gonna be as bright on the, on the side, on the side that we can't see, but you can see just an outline Now, we're gonna draw, and I, excuse me, it's more about right here. We're gonna find the center of where those two circles intersect. From there, we're gonna take that into the center of the base of the sacrum, and we're gonna draw a line there. The last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sacral slope and we're gonna go perpendicular to the sacral slope. So we'll draw the sacral slope first. We find that center, that center spot again on the sacrum. 
we're gonna go perpendicular, and then we're gonna measure this angle. And I've got 38 degrees there. And again, that pelvic incidence, we will be comparing that number compared to the lumbar lordosis. And again, in that next video, we'll talk about, we'll talk about the relationship between those two and, and how that affects treatment. Uh, thank you.